In America, there's a lot of people who call themselves skeptics and who wear that label like a badge of pride. But in reality, many of these people are not real skeptics at all. And what they try to pass off as logic and intellectual objectivity is just a different flavor of blind belief. Real skepticism is a virtue. Real skepticism is an attitude of doubt, a tendency towards disbelief, a critical disposition which takes nothing for granted and which suspends judgment when faced with new information. Real skeptics question everything, especially their own assumptions. A real skeptic studies the principles of logic and first and foremost endeavors to apply those principles to themselves. These fake skeptics that I've been alluding to seem to think that the fact that they give lip service to science and don't believe in God qualifies them as rational and skeptical. But when those same people debate politics, you'll often find that they have their own variety of religion that they adhere to, specifically the religion of the state and a state-sponsored version of history. The ultimate threat to the religion of the state is to challenge the official version of historical events, especially when those events are recent and their interpretation is still being used to guide policy. State-sponsored history, the version touted in public schools and preached over the mainstream media, is the mythology of the state, and it is as essential to their existence as creation stories are to any religion. To question the official story, especially when that story has political consequences, is heresy. And they even have a special slur that they have invented for the heretics, one that's designed to marginalize and discredit them from a distance. They call them conspiracy theorists, or extremist, occasionally adding the token left-wing or right-wing on the end of the slur to amplify the effect. These are ad hominem attacks, the most common and low form of logical fallacy. The ad hominem logical fallacy takes many forms, but at its essence, it comes down to drawing attention away from the logical arguments of a particular debate by placing attention on the person speaking and making that person look foolish in the eyes of the audience. This is a very effective method of winning in the eyes of an uneducated crowd, but it's sophism, the opposite of rational debate. Those who use these tactics are not appealing to your intelligence, they're appealing to your ignorance. So when you hear someone throwing around the term conspiracy theorist or conspiracy kook or any of these other kinds of slurs, be cognizant of what they're doing. Understand that the speaker is intentionally skewing the debate and attempting to use your prejudices against their opponent. This behavior is a symptom of the herd mentality. It is actually the same cult psychology that false skeptics like to attack in groups that they deride, but ignore when it rears its head in their own ranks. Now you might have noticed that I specifically pointed out Americans here. This isn't a casual reference. America stands out like no other country that I've ever encountered when it comes to this phenomenon. In the five plus years that I've spent living abroad in the course of my life, I've observed the psychology of the people in each region. And what I've found is that even in third world countries where the level of education is absolutely abysmal, the degree of openness to new information is much higher than even what you find in university graduates in the United States. Let's just take for example the events of September 11th, 2001. Specifically, Building 7. Building 7 was the third building that fell in New York on that day, the one that no one talks about. Unlike the other two buildings, World Trade Center Building 7, also referred to as the Solomon Building, wasn't hit by a plane. Now, no one denies that it fell. No one claims that a plane hit it. No one defending the official story can give a rational explanation as to why it fell straight down into its own footprint at 5.20 p.m. And no one can explain why the BBC reported that it had fallen 20 minutes earlier while it was clearly still standing. Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago, I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. And indeed it has. Apparently that's only a few hundred yards away from where the World Trade Center towers were. And it seems that this was not a result of a new attack. It was because the uh, building had been weakened uh, during uh, this morning's attacks. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. There's almost a sense downtown in uh, New York behind me, down by the World Trade Centers, of uh, just an area completely closed off as the rescue workers try to do their job. But this isn't the first building that um, has suffered as a result. We know that part of the Marriott Hotel next to the World Trade Center also collapsed as a result of this huge amount of falling debris from 110 floors of two, the two twin towers of the World Trade Center. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash, and we know that behind that there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline. When you show this kind of evidence to the average European, 
The thought of attacking the person who points out the inconsistencies doesn't even cross their minds. Their reaction is usually amazement that the cover-up was so poorly executed. And not once has any European that I've ever presented this information to resorted to low-grade tactics like calling me a conspiracy theorist. Why is this? Why is it that French and Germans can look at the same information and form a rational conclusion, whereas even highly educated Americans will react emotionally before even allowing themselves to consider the evidence? Why is it that Americans get so defensive when you point to a gaping hole in the fabric of their historical mythology? I'm sure there's multiple variables that contribute, but it seems to me that the predominant factor in this equation is American exceptionalism and its tight coupling with the group identity of the American people. This phenomenon is present even in political factions that would never admit it openly, even in ideological groups that perceive variations of this pattern in others, but who are unable to see it in themselves. Europeans don't look at history with stars in their eyes. They were never raised to believe that their nation was the one nation that did not fall for the temptations of empire, or that their government was incapable of committing atrocities against its own people for political gain. Europeans have a more realistic sense of history, and are therefore much less shocked to see evidence that places the US government in the same category as the Third Reich. The thing is, most of what fake skeptics like to call conspiracy theory isn't theory at all. It's just historical evidence that doesn't fit the official narrative, and which may in fact indicate that the official narrative was an intentional fabrication. The absurdity is that over time documents are declassified, and events such as the Gulf of Tonkin, which for years was the realm of so-called conspiracy theory, became acknowledged as historical fact. Yes, the government lied, got you into a war, killed 58,000 Americans and hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese. They'll tell you that now. They'll acknowledge it now, when it's too late to do anything about it, when it's too late to stop the war that that lie was used to promote. To summarize, to call pointing out inconsistencies in the official version of a historical event a conspiracy theory is the opposite of skepticism, and it indicates a lack of critical thinking skills. As a culture, we need to hold people who resort to these kinds of illogical tactics accountable.